Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action Long Range Forecasters and it's Monday the 2nd of April and today I'm going to tell you about what happened in the winter, uh, talk about the very interesting extreme events which have been happening in March and then I'll be telling you what's going to happen in April and we're going to talk finally about why all these extreme things are going on. Okay, well, first of all, the winter, 2011 to 2012. This was a very significant winter. This winter was very important because of the dramatic contrasts around the world, although overall it was actually very cold in the Northern Hemisphere. We did have some mild glass in the British Isles, and there was uh, mild glass in America, and generally speaking, we did predict both of those. But Europe and Asia was astonishingly cold, reaching minus 43 in places. Now, in terms of the details of the uh, Western Europe and Britain, we had originally thought in one of our six long-range predictions uh, uh, first issued in October, we'd said it was likely to be a very cold December. Now, we changed our minds about that before it happened. However, what we had expected to happen in December happened in February with a vengeance in Europe as opposed to England, although Eastern England was, in fact, very cold at times in the late part of, of the winter, which we correctly... OK, in terms of uh, other forecasts, um, there were quite a lot of people saying it was bound to be very cold everywhere because the world is generally cooling. Now, we know the world is generally cooling, but it doesn't mean it's going to be very cold everywhere. We shall talk a bit about the significance of this very cold uh, event in, in Europe. Um, it's very interesting that this was caused largely by blocking high pressure in Scandinavia and the north of, of Europe, giving east winds at times. The last time that happened in such a big manner was 1986, which was 26 years ago. And another time, the most significant time it happened before then, was 1947, when in fact I was born in that winter, um, where there was another of these high pressures to the north and very strong east winds which is 65 years ago, and you may notice that 65 is 5 times 13, and 26 is 2 times 13. Um, so we were looking into this to see if the, there is a 13-year cycle in some weather systems, but it hiccups and leaves gaps to see if we could explain it in terms of that. So we've reached a new understanding of this hiccuping 13-year cycle. We won't go into the details, it's safe to say, amazingly, and this, this could be a party trick, in fact, but this is real. Uh, on my birthday, my real birthday, in March the 10th, 1947, there were sunspots in the centre of the solar disk, and this was the great sunspot of 1947. 65 years later, there was also another great sunspot in the centre of the solar disk, although it was March the 9th, 19, uh, 2012 which you might think is a day earlier, but because we've had an extra leap day because of the, the, this year and the year 2000, it actually works out as the same. Now, this is not just a coincidence, but it's something to do with the way the, the sun uh, operates and lunar modulations take place. Okay, there's a, a lot of cycles and sub-cycles happening in, in weather and in solar activity. An easier one to understand is a general 60-year cycle of extreme uh, events. There are many cycles and sub-cycles of activity on the Sun and in Sun-Earth relations. And an easier one to understand than the 13-year hiccuping cycle I told you about is the 60-year general cycle of extreme events and also the circulation in the Pacific, for example, they're all connected together. This march in uh, Britain and America has been very interesting and had some extremes, one of which was the very warm situation in Scotland, which last happened as warm as this 55 years ago, 
which fits into our theoretical 59-year give or take five-year signal. Uh, in Britain, uh, we had the very sunny later part of, of March, uh, very well predicted with uh, high pressure dominating. Um, it was sometimes warmer even than we expected, but nevertheless it was the right general situation. <coughs> And we did say the last day of March would be much colder in the southeast, which indeed it was to the day. The 13th to 15th of March, and we specifically predicted this in our forecast in detail, we said there would be tornadoes and giant hail in the lower Midwest. That happened. We also said after that there would be uh, a big heat wave in the central and eastern parts of the USA. That happened. And then we said that would turn into or change into something more focused on Texas with intense heat in Texas. And that happened. And then finally, there was a cold blast just coming down from uh, Canada in uh, the northeast part of, of America uh, at the end of, of, of March, coming into April, which we predicted. Of course, some people have said, oh yes, yes, warm America, warm Britain, this must be global warming. Now, of course, they always say this, don't they? However, I have to tell you, it's not. It's complete nonsense. Um, you see, if these things are to do with global warming, we need to have a warm globe in order for it to happen. However, if you look at a map of what's been going on in the Northern Hemisphere, you find that, in fact, those were the two warmest places on the planet in March, the USA and, uh, and Britain. But the Northern Hemisphere as a whole was actually cold. And furthermore, the Northern Hemisphere has been cooling uh, pretty well, continually, for the last um, couple of years at least. So you can't say that global warming is causing warming when there isn't any global warming. Okay, an important question is why are these extreme events happening now and why did so many happen last year? And these weren't just little extremes, they were very major extreme events. Now, in terms of the details of the uh, Western Europe and Britain, we had originally thought in one of our uh, six long-range predictions uh, uh, first issued in October, we said it was likely to be a very cold December. Now, we changed our minds about that before it happened. However, what we had expected to happen in December happened in February with a vengeance in Europe as opposed to England, although Eastern England was, in fact, very cold at times in the late part of of the winter, which we correctly. Now, of course, standard meteorologists just say, oh, it's the jet stream. And they explain everything in terms of itself. Like, the jet stream shifting is, is the jet stream shifting. And technically, they say, well, the big extremes are caused by changes in the track of low pressure systems as they go around the globe. And when there's big amplitude swings in this track, then you do get more extreme events. However, they don't know where these big amplitude swings come from. Now, we do understand the origin of these big amplitude swings in the jet stream. And these are caused by a mingling of solar magnetic factors and lunar factors, which is why the basic signal is the 60-year signal we mentioned. And for the last few years we've been in the middle of one of these peaks of big swings in the jet stream. And we're going to carry on like this for at least a, uh, another year or so. And right now we are in perhaps the most exciting phase of this 60-year this, this cycle. In view of that I can tell you of some more extreme things which are going to happen in April. First of all, the drought conditions in Britain due to blocking high pressures are going to continue for eastern England.
So there'll be a big shortage of rain still. Now, as an aside, it's rather curious that the government and the water companies have not asked us about this, apart from one water company. Basically, I understand it, they do not want to know and do not want the public to know, but they want to jump up and down in order to charge people more for water. However, we can tell them for nothing that it is going to carry on as a drought this month. Now, in Europe, the second half of April is going to be extreme heat in Eastern Europe and drought conditions there as well. In fact, drought over a lot of Europe. That is important. In America, there's going to be a lot of extremes happening. Um, the most significant in, in some ways of which is a tornado swarm is going to take place in the Midwest and the lower Midwest between the 22nd and the 24th of April. And that will be accompanied by extreme events around the world. But this is going to be a dangerous event, and uh, people should uh, be aware of it. To find out more about what I've said, come to our website, weatheraction.com, and of course, subscribe to our forecast for Britain and Ireland, Europe, the USA, and earthquake prediction. In the next video we're going to tell you some specific forecasts of what is going to happen when the Olympic torch relay gets underway, what's going to happen at the Diamond Jubilee celebrations, what is going to happen at Wimbledon and what will happen at the Olympics themselves. So watch this space. Thank you.